guys, it's Vic. Splatoon 3 is being taken in a great direction. The new specials the development team have been adding just look so fun. While my favorite may still be the crab tank, I believe the new vacuum cleaner special may be the big game changer for Splatoon 3. It's so complex, and I'm gonna explain why through the context of the modes we already have in Splatoon 2. Let's begin. Splatoon, as a franchise, is a shooter with a strong emphasis on mobility. You want to be firing your weapon as much as possible to provide turf for yourself and your teammates. And this is always a good thing in turf war, right? Could there be times where the vacuum is detrimental to winning a match? Expertly timing the usage of the vacuum could make a massive difference in a game's outcome. Unless you can fire while using the vacuum, which seems unlikely, you're giving up the ability to paint for a short period of time. The range of the vacuum and the inking potential of your weapon could play a major role in deciding when to actually use it. If your weapon paints better, why not save your special a little while longer for when two opponents are trying to vie for your turf? If your weapon flies further than the vacuum, why would you want to give up the ability to damage opponents in a heated battle? Players will have to decide for themselves the potential risk and reward. Of course, you do fire a blast at the end of using the vacuum, but there's still a delay before this happens. Players using the vacuum themselves seem relatively helpless and might see themselves getting jumped similar to what happens to Stingray players out in the middle of the field. It'll be exciting to see how this meta develops. In the end, it'll be a trade-off. You'll be stopping other people from being able to do their job, while you also won't be able to do yours. In Splat Zones, you could stop the enemy team from being able to reclaim enough of the zone to return it to a neutral state. Or you could do it in overtime, or even when you just need control for those last few ticks of the Splat Zone timer. Timing will be everything. Depending on how good it is, it could become the GG ray of stages with small Splat Zones. Think about the current zone on Black Valley Skate Park. There's no way the vacuum isn't reaching across that. Imagine someone using the big bubbler and a vacuum simultaneously on a little tiny splat zone. What do you even do? I, I mean, I guess we'll figure it out. <laughs> you could also stand near the zone and just prevent people from being able to approach. Nobody's gonna feel comfortable walking up to the splat zone if you're keeping them from putting turf on the ground. It's really funny to think about how well this weapon could counter short-range shooters. At least ones that just, you know, don't go around you in two seconds. <laughs> Tower control will turn vacuum players into a living, breathing splash wall for their teammates. Just stand in front of them and keep a side of the tower untouchable. Depending on the vacuum's range, could they even stand on a nearby ledge and stop more enemy fire? I don't know. All the enemy team has to do is reposition and fire again. But those few seconds could let your team steal the lead in a tight match. The vacuum could also be used to prevent the tower from getting covered in enemy ink, keeping teammates from taking damage. Sitting on the tower with the vacuum could again lead to the issue of being a sitting duck. But hey, if you could stingray from it, you could vacuum from it too. This thing could be pure evil in Rainmaker. See a Rainmaker carrier coming your way, aided by teammates that are painting a path? Eh, fire your vacuum and stop that Rainmaker carrier in its tracks. Your teammates will be able to take care of the rest. Or hey, you can take care of it with that big old blast at the end of your vacuum's life. Do you think it could suck up a Rainmaker blast? There's, there's no way. There's no way. Do you think we'll go back to like the Splatoon 1 Rainmaker tornado just to prevent that from happening? That'd be hilarious. It could also be used just as easily to protect the Rainmaker from oncoming fire. Being aware of enemies' positions as well as where they are coming from will be even more important in Splatoon 3. That's why you have a map. Watch the enemy paint appear on the map so you can predict which direction you should fire your vacuum. Since this special doesn't last long, and <laughs> honestly that's a good thing, you won't be able to protect your teammate for long. And uh, I don't, I don't know, uh, protect clam carriers and clam blitz? Assuming clam blitz survives the Splatoon 3, it would never hurt to have a free shield when you're marked for the entire enemy team to see. Or Someone could just fire a vacuum after they're done throwing in their little clams, giving teammates a couple of seconds to get those last couple of clambos in. In Splatoon 2, you can throw clams really quick, and we all know the best way to win a clam blitz match is to have long, high-scoring pushes. What do you think? And what do you think they'll even call it? 
Will it really just be the vacuum cleaner? There are so many bad pun names like suction up, <laughs> like like suction cup, or ink get, <laughs> a callback to inkjet that I don't think would actually get used, but hey, it, it'd be funny. Names that are too long, like reverse squid, that also won't work because we have octopi in the name. I don't know, man. I'm really excited to see the vacuum cleaner in action, and I really hope that one of the test fire weapons has it. If the test fire only has four or five weapons, we won't see every special, which is insane to think about, especially if this doesn't happen until August or something. I'll laugh if this is the first special to either get a huge buff or a massive nerf. If it shows up in the test fire, we might be able to just see how crazy it is right away. We'll find out in September no matter what! If you enjoyed listening to me ramble about Splatoon 3, don't forget to subscribe for more in the future! Thank you for watching. Bye.